Ah, mixed martial arts. The sport of MMA has graced our televisions with glorious contests of skill, technique and occasionally a good old-fashioned brawl. There's just an endless list of fights that could easily get you jumping out of your seat from all the excitement. There's also a good number of fights that your MMA fanatic of a friend probably won't tell you about. Most MMA organizations, especially the UFC, would rather not talk about these fights either, and for good reason. Those very same organizations are supposed to promote excited, action-packed brawls, not five-round snooze fests that might get you and your friends reaching out for the coffee a lot sooner than you thought. These types of fights, unfortunately, happen though, and that's exactly what we'll be counting down on this one. Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. This is MMA Edge, and today we'll be talking about the top five worst fights in the UFC. Number five, Roycey Grace versus Ken Shamrock two. Your uncle, or your dad has probably told you about this one because I know mine did or rather about how awfully boring it was. Royce Gracie and Ken Shamrock, two mixed martial arts legends, met for a second time after facing off at the very first UFC event, UFC 1. Now Royce quickly submitted Shamrock via a well-placed sleeve choke on their first fight and Shamrock had been aching for a rematch ever since. The rematch between the jiu-jitsu legend and the former Pancras MMA champion was setting itself up to be a super fight and fans all around the world were excited to see it. That was until they actually saw it. Now the fight itself was painfully boring and it was evident in every single way. The entire match lasted for over 35 minutes with both fighters hugging each other on the floor for the most part. Now, it was later revealed by Ken Shamrock himself that he was even planning on mounting Gracie for two more hours since his game plan involved wearing the Brazilian down until he could finish him off with a submission of his own. Now, just imagine what could have happened if the UFC hadn't implemented the 30-minute time limit on that match. The people watching the fight inside the Independence Arena would have all walked out by the time Shamrock and Gracie were done with their fight. And I wouldn't have blamed them either. Number four, Anderson Silva versus Damian Meyer. Anderson Silva is widely regarded as not only being one of the greatest fighters of all time, but as an exciting and technical striker as well, at least until his fight with Damian Meyer. The two cross paths in UFC 112 and Maya's game plan against a legendary fighter was simple. Wait for Silva to try and take him down, then take the fight to him from there. Unfortunately for Maya and the viewers, Silva wasn't the type of guy to initiate takedowns. The result was an overwhelmingly boring fight, with Silva simply running circles around Maya, taunting and belittling the jiu-jitsu master. Now, Maya tried landing a few punches on Silva in an attempt to try and goad the striker into taking him down, but to no avail. Silva was simply on another level when it came to his Muay Thai striking skills, and it showed. Damien was barely able to land anything while the spider was content at evading and jabbing his opponent until the very end of the fight. The fight was so bad that even the UFC's president, Dana White, publicly voiced his frustration and displeasure about Silva's performance in that fight. Number three, Mickey Gall versus CM Punk. Now, some of you might be wondering just why this fight is on this list. After all, this fight was actually pretty exciting and not as boring as the other bouts we've just talked about on this list. But there's a simple reason as to why this fight made it here though. It should have never even happened in the first place. CM Punk was in no way, shape, or form ready to fight in the UFC and his record on the sport of MMA says that he'll probably never be. The fact that Punk completely skipped everything that you'd have to go through as a fighter in order to make it in the UFC, which is supposed to have fighters of the highest level, is completely ridiculous. Punk hadn't competed in any of the smaller promotions prior to his fight in the UFC, even though several of his peers such as Jack Swagger 
and Brock Lesnar had lots of experience in amateur wrestling before they made the switch to MMA. Punk was clearly in over his head when he signed up for a multi-fight contract with the UFC and his actions were obviously just a byproduct of his rage against the WWE shortly after he left the company. Even Punk himself admitted that his decision to fight in the UFC after his last two fights wasn't very smart, while acknowledging that he'd learned several things about himself in the process. Several MMA fans are hoping they never have to see Punk inside the cage again after seeing him fight so terribly. Here's hoping he doesn't come back anymore, eh? Number two, Tyrone Woodley versus Stephen Thompson, two. Woodley and Thompson had the whole world in awe the first time these two sensational welterweights faced off in UFC 205. It was a back and forth fight which had fans on the edge of their seats as the bout progressed. The first fight resulted in a majority draw though, which didn't satisfy a lot of people's minds as to who the better fighter was. A rematch between the two was inevitable and everyone was excited to see Woodley and Thompson face off once again. Now it was a great stylistic matchup that pitted Thompson, a decorated full contact kickboxer against an explosive striker and wrestler in Woodley. The result? An underwhelming slow paced fight that lasted a whopping 25 minutes. Now most MMA fight fans don't mind seeing a five rounder, especially if both fighters are actively working towards the win. This was not the case with Woodley and Thompson though, as both fighters simply circled the cage, throwing the occasional jab and low kick, too afraid of losing the fight if they stuck their heads out of the sand a bit more. Woodley eventually won the fight via the decision at the end of the bout. Now this fight is probably the reason why Woodley gained a reputation of being boring despite knocking out the likes of Robbie Lawler and Josh Koscheck in the very first round. It's just like Warren Buffett's famous quote that said, it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to ruin it. In Woodley's case, it just took him an extra 15 minutes to ruin his, that's all. Number one, Derek Lewis versus Francis Ngannou. Now Derek Lewis is a name that strikes fear into the hearts of even the toughest fighters in the UFC. And the same can be said about Francis, the Predator, and Ganu. Both of them have knockout power that's likely enough to punch a hole through a school bus. Their punching power combined would probably be enough to level an entire building. Well, almost. The matchup was bound to be explosive, and the UFC marketed it as such. Everyone grabbed their popcorn when the two behomers finally stepped into the cage and readied themselves for a brawl. Unfortunately, the fans were treated to a relaxing, sleep-inducing dance-off rather than the explosive fireworks show that everyone was promised. In fact, the fight between the two infamous knockout artists was so painfully boring that the deafening boos were about the only thing you could notice in that fight. And Garnu didn't pull out his famous overhand right or his feared uppercut punch on Lewis, probably because he was too scared of getting taken down after being mauled on the ground for 25 minutes by Stipe Miocic. Lewis didn't do the fight any favors either, as he stood on the end of the cage waiting for Nganu to pull a punch. Lewis somehow won the terrible fight and eked out a win in one of the worst fights in UFC history. And I'm fairly certain it's not going to be a win that Lewis will remember fondly when he retires. And that's going to be it for today. So if you liked the video, please do click that subscribe button to get more MMA content in the future.